And welcome back to the Murdy Creative Co. Podcast. I'm your host, Colin Murdy, and today's topic is education and experience. But first, I want to say thank you to everyone who has supported the company so far. If you haven't got a chance, go check us out on the web at murdycreative.co. That's M-U-R-D-Y creative.co. Or you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram by searching at murdycreative.co to see the best of our product shots. Follow us to keep up to date with our daily photos and be the first one to know about new product launches. You can also use the subscribe button at the bottom of our website to be included in all of our new product announcements. Be sure to check out our laser engraving, personalization options, and exclusive colors on the website. Or you can get a blank one on Amazon Prime. Oh, also, go follow us on Snapchat and Twitter, Murdy Creative Co., no dot, Murdy Creative Co., all one word, Snapchat and Twitter. I do a lot of kind of behind-the-scenes updates on Snapchat. There's a lot of cool stuff that I kind of give little hints of before we actually do uh, the kind of official launch of things. So if you want to kind of keep behind the scenes, check out our Snapchat. Um, today's topic actually comes to us courtesy of Gregory Lewis on Twitter when he asks, can you do a podcast episode about education, knowledge, and slash training and I think it's actually a pretty good topic because it's something I probably haven't talked about a ton in the past and it's something that I think is well it's important um to give you a little background about my education I went to Parker High School uh in Janesville Wisconsin did a regular public school education and then I went to Concordia University Wisconsin for four years in those four years I did my undergraduate in marketing and then I got my master's degrees in management international business and global sales and marketing Now, one of those degrees is actually a a degree from a sister school that I studied at a little while for in Austria that is in Steyr, and I loved going there. That was beautiful. Uh, And that was the one that was in international or global sales and marketing. That was the one that I got there. And that was a very interesting experience. And uh, one of these days, I'll actually do more into that that topic probably and talk a little bit more about my time abroad and what that uh, what that did for me. But I'll probably do that topic more. more around the time that we eventually get around to doing our global launch. So I have, I have an interesting mixed feeling about education. I think that I did a lot of it and I did a lot of it because I wanted to. So for me, I thought it would get me a nice job, but I also knew that that really wasn't why I was there when I was in college. I went to class because I wanted to know more about what they were teaching and Concordia was an excellent school. I mean, they had a lot of people who'd been teachers who'd been in the industries for many years, and they had pretty good connections with a lot of the local business community and some of the big stuff in Milwaukee. So that was awesome, and I, I really appreciate all I, that I was offered there. Uh, when I was going there, they were working on doing a lot more of the startup entrepreneurial world, which was kind of becoming hot at that time. It was 20, well, 20, well, 2015 now. It was about when it got started for at Concordia, and for me, I thought that was a a good place because I liked that. And I liked the fact that I could get my master's degrees and my bachelor's at the same time. And the way they, they did that for the most part was you kind of just took the master's classes. And if you pass the master's classes, they gave you retro credits back for the, the undergrad courses. You could do that for a few of them. I still took about 19 credits every semester though. And that was a lot. And I took 25 credits my senior year, which was just madness. Um, but uh, I really enjoyed my master's classes and I really enjoyed my undergraduate classes. And it was... I mean, they were different, and I definitely think that they were valuable in different ways, and I would encourage people who really like to seek knowledge, who really want to know more about theory and about how the macro parts of the, the economic world and the business world and the management world and all the other stuff work, I think that's a great place to do it, and I think that there's definitely a place in the real world for theory, but... Um, Experience has been an interesting education for me as well, because after I left Concordia and I went out into the real world, both as a young, excited, you know, wide eyed corporate person um, and corporate worker, I, uh, I really was very excited to implement change and take all of this, this new found knowledge I had and all of these cool ideas and, you know, big picture stuff that I learned in my master's classes and apply that to the work I was doing um, in the corporate world. But I found... I wouldn't say that it wasn't received. That's not the right attitude. It was received, but big ships move slow. And so that frustrated me a lot because, of course, I'm sitting here thinking, well, I know the right answer, so obviously. Now, that was just ego, and that's purely ego to this day. Um, but for me, in my my current world where I'm kind of, I have the master of my own fate, like I'm, I'm, I can decide what happens with the company, I've found myself 
going back to the basics with a lot of the business stuff when things get tough. And I think it's interesting because in my mind, one of the things that's the hardest to teach is, is marketing. It really is. And I think the reason why is because marketing changes so fast. So you can't really, I think, effectively teach the nitty gritty of marketing because by the time that the, the student gets out of school or the time that you actually get to teaching it, it'll already be different. So really the foundational difficulties of education in business particularly is the speed at which business changes and it happens overnight. Facebook started in 2009 has absolutely changed the world. Amazon, similar thing. I mean, you look at these companies that are less than two decades old and they have 100% changed the way that the market works in very profound ways. And that's a big deal when you want to talk about trying to train kids up and teach them how to become good leaders and good thinkers and stuff like that. So for marketing, a lot of my education that I think I use the most today is the stuff that I learned in my early marketing classes, like Marketing 101 or 131, I guess, was what it was called. Uh, and I loved that class because it talked about the foundational parts of, of business, like marketing. Uh, you know, you got your target market, you got your product pl- price, place, and promotion. And those kind of ethereal macro concepts well, they, they're true, and they manifest in very different and interesting ways. And for me, the the one part of my master's program that I really enjoyed a lot was from the management stuff that I learned. And a lot of that management stuff was the idea of if you're going to build, in my case, a luxury brand, then you need to you need to act like that and you need to let that idea and that that goal and that thing percolate and, and drive what you do later for your actions. And I would say that if I hadn't had my education, if I hadn't spent my time in um, in class and in college, I would have definitely done things a little bit differently in the business realm. And I can tell that because my natural tendency whenever I come up with a new idea is to just immediately try to put it out in the market. And well, that has worked out to some extent pretty well. Um, I've had to temper that. I mean, I have to temper that all the time, but I've had to temper that specifically because it, it creates a very um, discordant message. It creates a, a very, um, what's the right word for it? It creates a message that can be confusing to someone who isn't exposed to the company all day long every day, right? If you're not in the inner workings, if you're not following us on our Snapchat, if you're not reading every tweet, every Instagram post, then the discordant launches of all of the products that strike me in the moment of inspiration would make no sense. And so one of the things that my education has definitely taught me to do is to to channel and to harbor some of my uh, ideas into a specific goal and to orient myself towards those goals and let the goals drive the actions in a lot of ways. And I think that's something that is important to teach everybody. I think that's a difficult thing to teach people. And I think it's a bigger principle, you know, pick a goal, let that goal kind of determine how you're going to, you're going to act and you're going to function and what you're going to put time into and energy into and what you're not going to do because you don't want to, you know, that tech to takes away from the goal or whatever the thing may be. So I think that principle is a really good guiding principle for the rest of your life. And I think sometimes those kinds of principles really can only effectively be taught with an example. And for me, that example was business. Using the the terms, the verbiage, the grammar, the language of business, I was able to understand that I need to pick a goal and I need to let all of the pieces circle around and orbit around that goal. And if they don't fit, they don't go. And that's for me been an important thing because, I mean, I get... How many times a day do I get suggestions for wallets, uh, iPad covers, bags, cases? I mean, there's you make anything out of leather, right? Like there's tons of things out there. And for me, the creator in me would say, let's do it. Let's launch everything. But the businessman, the one that went to school and understood more of that and, and went to a lot of the into the detailed work behind that would say, OK, not yet. Maybe someday, but not yet, because we want to build a brand that people can recognize and acknowledge and know at the drop of a hat what they're about and what they mean. And once we build that solid foundation, that solid message with clear branding, with clear language, with good keywords, with paying attention to how we represent ourselves in images and in text, after we've done that and people have really clearly understood and established that we're the best binder journal folio company on the market, then... And only then can we do the other things that we want to do. So I think that training and that experience 
our, or I should say that training led to actions that I would not have otherwise taken. And I think to some extent that ex- the experiences that I've had have really hammered that home. Another thing that I think was part of uh, my training that I didn't anticipate was that, and this is going to sound strange, I, I may be smarter than I thought I was before. And I'm going to explain that a little further. There are times when I've had uh, outside input from it can be well-meaning friends and family or it can be uh, professionals who are reaching out to me to try to convince me to do things differently with my business and whatever that may whatever that form that may take Um, and there have been a lot of times where I've kind of I've stopped and I've thought to myself well that doesn't sound right or that doesn't seem to be the right thing and I've actually noticed that more often than not I I I'm pretty in tune with our customer base. At least I think I am. And that's probably pure ego as well. But uh, I, I'm surprised at how much I, I know because of my education. And I think that's valuable. I would definitely value it. I definitely do value it. Um, but that being said, I think for entrepreneurs out there who are looking to get an education you have to go into it saying, I'm going to get as much of this out as I can. I'm going to try to learn as much as I can rather than I'm trying to get a degree so I can get my little star on the wall or I can, you know, have a a good thing to take to my next job. Like I think, A, that's a bad way to go into education, just period. That doesn't get you anything. Um, I think if you can go into it with mindset of, I'm going to try to suck every last drop of knowledge out of this place and I'm going to spend every waking moment I can gaining as much as I can from here, I think you'll actually really enjoy it. And I think it'll make a lot more sense. Uh, and I think that's hard to do, but I think if you can pull it off, you'll really get the most out of your training and out of your college experience. And I think that's true for everyone. Uh, you will learn things along the way that will go counter to what you were taught. You will learn things, um, that other people will disagree with. And that will be difficult because sometimes the people that you're disagreeing with or the people that are disagreeing with you are very, very, very smart people. But it's the willingness to continuously learn in the real world. And when you are in an educational or training setting to try to gain as much as you can from that and to let that be good is I think that's that's really the core. This is a I'm going to say something that's going to come up in a later podcast and I didn't come up with it. It's a Jordan B. Peterson um, thing. And so it's going to come up in a, two episodes from now because I've actually started planning these things out, which is weird. Um, but he says, act as if the person you're talking to knows something you don't. And that'll make a lot more sense, I think, later when you'll hear an episode, two episodes from now, which uh, will be more about that topic. But I think that's the case of education as well. You have to walk into the room thinking to yourself, the person that's teaching me may know something I don't. I actually think you should do that the rest of your life for all of your life because that might be a very good good way to learn. So, all right. First off, thanks so much to you, Greg, for, for suggesting this. For any of you out there who want to hear podcast topics, you got things that you're like, I want to know more about, please send them my way. Our next topic is how do I journal? That came to us via Rob Morgan on Instagram, and I'll talk more about that on Thursday. Um, but first, thanks folks for tuning in today. Uh, be sure to check back in on Thursday for that next topic. And, uh, don't forget to check that subscribe button below to be sure to get the latest podcast right away. I'm not advertising these as much on my main channel on Instagram. So that may be why some of you aren't seeing it. If you have any questions about your leather binder, please feel free to contact us on the main page of our website at murdycreative.co. You can contact us via email, Instagram, Facebook, all the usual things. Uh, I'll be happy to get back to you as soon as possible, but I do appreciate your patience because we do get a lot of requests. Uh, if you think I deserve it, a good review can go a long way to help us grow our new community. Word of mouth is still the best form of advertising, but please leave us a review on the podcast listening app that you're listening on and on our Facebook for the product. So those are the best two places to leave us reviews. It really does help. People read them and they really care. So please leave us a review. If you have any podcast topics you want to hear more about, as I mentioned before, send them my way. Really, I do enjoy the suggestions. I often am wondering what you guys want to know about, so that feedback is super helpful. You can send it however you want. Snapchat and Twitter, by the way, are the ones that really get my attention. So please, if you're looking for ways to get a hold of me directly, Snapchat and Twitter is an easy one. Uh, If you're looking for multiple winders for gifts, giveaways, menus, really any reason, ask about our bulk discounts available. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day, and goodbye.